Greetings folks. In this video I'm going to be doing another crow break or butterfly break mix using the Radio Master TX12. Uh, so what that means basically is using OpenTX or EdgeTX on the uh, small black and white screen. This mix will work equally for the Radio Master Zorro uh, and the um, Tyrannus QX7, all of the OpenTX EdgeTX radios with the small black and white screen. So butterfly mix, as I'm sure you're aware if you're watching this video, is flaps down, ailerons up, and possibly a little bit of uh, elevator compensation as well. So let's get to the mix. There's a few different ways to do it. Um, I usually go for the simplest way, which involves flaps halfway down, and then for the rest of the travel of the slider, we get the proper crow breaking. And that way you don't have to dial in offsets and things like that, but uh, we'll see more about that when we do the programming. Okay, now we can make a new model. It starts from scratch. Uh, now, I wouldn't use this wizard at all. I don't think it works very well, so we'll just reverse out of that, and that has set up a basic model. First step is bind up a, a, at least a seven-channel receiver. You can get away with six channels. Now, ailerons have to be on separate channels. You can't have the ailerons on a wire lead and do this sort of mixing. Uh, flaps can be on a wire lead, but I actually have them on separate channels. So I've got ailerons on channel 1 and channel 5, elevator on channel 2, throttle on channel 3, rudder on channel 4, uh, flaps on channels 6 and 7. And let's go through to see what mix has been set up. Uh, the radio automatically sets up Inputs called aileron, elevator, throttle and rudder using 100% of the aileron stick, 100% of the elevator stick, 100% of the throttle stick, 100% of the rudder stick. Uh, I just tend to get rid of them just to save confusion. I don't need inputs. Just highlight them and hit the return button. That just saves confusion later on in the mixes page and I'll get rid of these mixes too because they're uh, not relevant to to me, they're still showing the inputs, whereas I want to use the raw sticks. doesn't matter. You can use inputs or you can use the raw sticks. I just uh, prefer to use the raw, raw sticks and then set up inputs if I actually need to later on. And you only need to, really, if you want to have expo and differential uh, on the same uh, aileron. So uh, let's just ignore that for the moment. So we'll set up our own model. And I've got mine set up as AETR, so it'll automatically pop in those uh, inputs. Uh, so channel 1 aileron, channel 2 elevator, channel 3 throttle, of course this plane doesn't have a throttle but uh, we'll uh, pretend it does, channel 4 rudder, channel 5 will also be aileron so I'll just highlight that and scroll down to copy that line down to channel 5 and now we need a couple of flaps so channel 6 uh, I will put the flaps on the S1 slider over here so I'm just twiddling that slider to select that input S1 and copy that line down to channel 7. So there we go that's the basic plane set up and, and now it's time to plug in your battery and check the direction of travel of each control surface. If the travel is going in the wrong direction then we'll go to the outputs page and reverse the channel there. So let's just have a look at the plane. So now ailerons are going in the correct direction, elevators correct rudders going the wrong way and the flaps are going the wrong way for me as well so I want to reverse the action of the flaps and the rudder. So rudder is on channel 4, invert, rudder is going the right way now and same for channel 6 and 7. Now the flaps are going down when I pull the slider down. They're also going up, which we don't need uh, for this mix. So I'm going to just uh, change the weight and offset of the of the flaps. Uh, so we'll go down to 50%. Negative 50 offset, so that when my slider is in the top position, the flap is level, and when it is in the bottom position, the flap is full down. Okay, so we'll do that for the other flap as well now. Can just copy that down there, of course. So now we've set up the flaps to work the way we want them. Uh, when the slider's in the out position, flaps are neutral. And then we have 
fall down when the slider is down. And all the other control surfaces are going in the correct direction. All right, let's get into the nitty gritty then. So for crow braking, we need the flaps going down and the ailerons going up when I operate the S1 slider. So what I'm going to do is insert another line for channel one, insert after, and we're going to use the S1 pot. And I can see we need to change the direction of travel and reduce the weight for the aileron. Just so we get it moving the way we want to. We want it to be going up, say, 30%. And you can see the aileron's going in the correct direction, but uh, when the S1 slider is at the full up, the aileron is down 30%, so we need to uh, add some offset. So if we add 30 offset now, the aileron will go back to neutral position when the S1 pot is in the up position. So that is now... So now the flap's going down all the way and the aileron is going up 30%. So the easy way now is to just copy that line down to the other aileron. Uh, so there's the line on channel 5. Betting that's going to be in the, going in the wrong direction. And I can see that it is, so let's edit that line. Make that 30, plus 30. And the offset, minus 30. And the add-ons are both now working in the correct direction. So now you can see as I'm rotating the S1 pot down, the flaps are going down and the ailerons are going up. And now the last thing we need to do is possibly add a little bit of elevator compensation because often planes will balloon up when you put the flaps down. So we'll just make the elevator go down a little bit also with the S1 pot just to keep the nose down. So what I'll do is just copy this line that we've added to the aileron channel down to the elevator channel and see what that does. And that has the elevator working in the correct direction, but probably a way too much. So we'll just reduce the weight and the offset now. So uh, typically you would only need 10 or less. So let's do maybe five and offset of five as well. And that's all working correctly. So we've got flaps going all the way down, ailerons coming up 30 and elevator going down just five. So that's a good starting point for crow braking. Now something I often do is uh, limit the up travel of the ailerons to just the lower travel of the S1 pot. So what I can do then is have the flaps going halfway down, just acting as flaps, uh, and then only when I go down past the halfway uh, rotation, we get the crow braking. And, and that just means that you don't have to worry about all the offsets uh, for adjusting ailerons and elevator. So if you do need to adjust them, it's only one figure you're, you're, adjust, you're adjusting. So I'll start with the aileron line there, edit that, and instead of having the offset, we'll get rid of that. Put that back to zero. And we'll use a curve, a function curve, and we'll use x is less than zero. So that just means that the first part of the S1 action is just flaps and the second part is crow braking. And as I said, it just takes out that need for uh, offset. So we'll just continue on with the other lines. We'll leave the elevator because uh, we may well need elevator compensation for the first part of the uh, flaps action. Offset back to zero. Function x is less than zero. How's that working? So I'll show you what that looks like now. So now you can see we've got flaps, flaps by themselves for the first half of the movement of the S1 and then crow braking when we move all the way down. This gives you another couple of options. Now a few people have suggested it's really good to have your crow braking on the throttle lever like this. Uh, but if you've got a, a, a glider with a motor, you still see, need something to operate the motor. Some people say you can use the slider on the side for the motor or a switch for the motor. 
Um, I would always want to use the throttle stick for the motor, I think. So this programming section will show you how to have crow braking for the bottom half of the throttle lever and uh, motor for the top quarter of the throttle lever. And for this we'll need to use a curve, which is a little bit more tricky, but let's get into it. So all I've done here for this line, for the ailerons going up, I have used the throttle lever as the input instead of the S1 slider and used the function X is less than zero. And that means that this mix will only be in operation for the lower half movement of the throttle stick. And same for the aileron on channel five, the crow braking section. Uh, we just needed 30% rather than negative 30% and still the function X is less than zero. So that's got the ailerons working in the correct direction. Now we need to work out the throttle. So for the throttle to only work in the top quarter of movement, we need to make up a curve. So throttle, we've got normal 100%, uh, but the curve, we change from nothing basically to a custom curve. Choose a custom curve, custom curve one. So let's go over and set up custom curve one. Here we go, here's curve one. And we need five points is good. Point 0.5, we move the Y up to 100 so that it uh, goes right up there. Actually, let's do it on custom curve 2 to show you what you start off with. So, so the curve starts off like this, and we move the dot across to 0.5, and we increase the Y value to 100. Point 0.4, we drop that right down to minus 100, and same for all the other ones. And we end up with this sort of curve where the first four points are down at minus 100, the final point, 0.5, is up at positive 100. And that means that the throttle will only work in that final quarter of movement, top movement of the throttle stick. So there are a couple of programming options for crow brakes. Just remember you have to have the ailerons on separate channels. Can't have them on a wire lead. The flaps can be on a wire lead, that's no drama. Happy gliding, happy landing, and thanks for watching.